Hi, and uh, welcome to this episode of Bergeron Briefs. Five minutes on whether you really need a will. Because the answer is maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, remember, we always talk about my couple, my, my couple, Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, the question is, if Frank and Mary have these assets, and one of them dies, do they need a will? They've got a house that's jointly owned. Um, Frank's got an IRA naming Mary as a beneficiary. Frank has an annuity naming Mary as the beneficiary. They've got CDs that are joint worth $100,000. Uh, Frank's got a checking account. Mary's got a checking account. Frank dies. What happens? Is there a need for, for, the, for going through the probate process? Or is there a need for a will? And the answer is, for the first question is, is probate required? Uh, in this case, the way that you figure out whether probate is required is you look asset by asset and you say, does someone need to figure out who gets this now? Regarding any jointly held assets, it's presumed that the surviving person owns the asset. So regarding the house that's joint, the CDs that are joint, and, fr um, and, and the CDs that are joint, there's no issue about needing, a, needing to go through probate uh, and therefore needing a will. Regarding Frank's IRA and Frank's annuity, he's named Mary as the death beneficiary, so there's no need to go through probate. Frank's checking account, if it was just in Frank's name, would require a probate. Uh, Mary, of course, is still alive, so there's no issue there. The point of probate is to figure out who gets what, and also to pay creditors, because creditors have one year from the day of your death to file a claim against your probate estate regarding any probate assets that's why it always takes at least a year to get through probate. By the way, cars, if one spouse died, are, dies, are pres presumptively owned by the surviving spouse, so that doesn't trigger, trigger probate. The problem with probate, as I mentioned, is that it takes at least a year and that it costs legal fees. Uh, once again, once, the, once that one year is done, the question is who gets what at the end of that year? Uh, if there are two possibilities, either at that point you can read the will, and that's the point of the will, would be to say who gets what, or apply the rules of intestacy. The rules of intestacy apply to anyone who le dies leaving probate assets where there is no will. The rules of intestacy are fairly straightforward. If there's a spouse, in general, in the case of Frank and Mary, the spouse gets everything. If the spouse has died, the kids divide the assets equally. And that system works terrific unless this is a blended marriage. So suppose in this case that Mary actually was Frank's child from a previous marriage, and the other children were children also from, or Mary's children from a previous marriage. In that case, when Frank dies, Mary gets the first $100,000, and Mary splits the remainder with Frank's children, or in this case with Frank's child. Now in this case, that doesn't cause any problems because Frank's asset, the only probate asset, was his $50,000 bank account. But you can see where this could create problems. In blended family situations, often a will is advisable. Now, what, what, about, what happens if Mary dies? Those are Mary's assets. She's got quite a bit. If Mary dies, uh, as far as the, the, if she does not have a will, assets will simply be divided equally among the kids. If that's what she wants, then she doesn't need a will. Only if there's an uneven distribution, if the assets are going not equally to the kids, or if someone else, a charity, is getting something, or if there was a predeceased child, and the question is, where does that predeceased child go, assets go? Or if Mary has, one of, uh, has a child who has a problem, if that child has a creditor problem, and so that, that Mary doesn't want to leave assets that are going to end up in the creditor's hands, or if Mary's child has a divorce, has, is not a good marriage, and so it may end up in the, in the hands of the, the spouse that you never liked in the first place, uh, or if, there, if the child has a disability. In those cases, uh, Mary would probably want to have a will in which she specified how to deal with those problems. Finally, uh, if Frank and Mary want to protect each other uh, from nurse, for nursing home purposes, so that if one of them dies, the assets, are, the assets of the two of them are safe if the survivor needs to qualify for nursing home benefits and qualify for mass health. The way to do that is for Frank and Mary to have wills that say that upon their deaths, the assets that would have gone to the surviving spouse will instead go in trust for the benefit of that surviving spouse. So in that situation, uh, also, you may very well, Frank and Mary may very well want to have a will. 
The moral of this story, though, is simple. Talk to an elder law attorney. They can, you can explain that situation to them, and, and the elder law attorney can very quickly tell you whether you really need a will or whether it's just an unnecessary expense. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks very much. If you've got any questions, remember the goal of life is just to sleep well at night. If you're not bothered about this, don't, bo don't worry about it. If you have questions, though, call me at 508-860-1470 or email me. I never charge for advice. Thank you very much.